Section 6.9, quadratic forms. Forms. Now we have a quadratic form right here. And then actually this is called a conic section. And we, what we're trying to do is change the coordinate system by turning it about the center, about the origin, such that to get rid of the number B. So B, make B turn into zero. And then we will just have something nice and neat that look like this. Back. And this turning, how, how exactly are we going to come up with the numbers A prime and C prime? That's what we're trying to do here. And it will arrive by the Lagrange's method. Now in this process, when this goes to here, remember that the discriminant, which is AC minus B squared, does not change. That is the new A and new B and new C, et cetera. And the discriminant, at, by the time you do this formula, is exactly the same for the, with, as the old one. Now to, to use Lagrange's formula, I mean Lagrange's method, we will use the qxy, that's the function we have, and we will use the constraint of the unit circle. This is x squared plus y squared equal to 1. And I will add a negative sign here for convenience. Yes, the, this is the unit circle. So this function, being that it is a continuous function, and the unit circle being a closed and bounded set, this function is going to achieve its maximum and its minimum on the unit circle. Now we will we will turn the axis right now in such a way we don't know where but we know this is possible that um, that such that the new system will be the x prime y prime system and we want x prime equal to one y prime equal to zero be a point where the the extreme value takes place. Uh, this is on the unit circle we're talking about. So on the new unit circle and then on the new when, when after we turn, the u, new unit circle was, will look like this. x prime squared plus y prime squared equal to, equal to 1. And we'll keep the negative sign in front for later convenience. The, the point is, when you turn something through, turn the coordinate system through the center of the, um, through, as the, through the origin as the center, the unit circle doesn't look one bit different. Okay, you can look at it. You can turn it. And it doesn't look tilted. Anyway, so that um, so that's the, so we want to turn this thing in such a way that um, the axis go, goes through x one, at one zero is where one of the extreme value happens. We don't care if it's the max or min, but we know that that's one of the extreme value and that's possible to do. So we will write down our new equation for this thing after this process takes place as q prime which looks exactly like q prime, uh, x prime, y prime. It's going to look exactly like this one, except you just put prime on every single thing. x prime squared plus b prime, x prime, y prime, plus c, y prime squared. So after that turning of the axis, and we substitute that x equal to sine, cosine, and all that stuff, we will come up with something like this. We don't know what the values are, but we know this is possible. And then now we are going to do the Lagrange's method. With this being the function and the, un the new unit circle, which is identical to the old one, being the constraint. Okay, so let's do the Lagrange's method, which we'll write down right here. So the Lagrange's method x, y prime equal to copy this whole thing down again which is a prime x prime squared plus b to b x prime y prime plus c y prime their prime here yeah, don't forget all the primes prime squared and then the lagrange multiplier times and because this is a minus i put a minus here just for convenience so that we can get a minus here it's the same. It, it comes out the same. Anyway, the minus uh, x prime squared plus y prime squared. This is the Lagrange's uh, equation. And then we take the partial derivative of these things with, with respect to x and y. And we will get, well, because there are so many twos here, we will write the two up front to save on some of the writing of twos. So partial l prime partial x prime equal to that begins with respect to x, so that gives us a prime x prime. And then with respect to x, 
that gives us b prime y prime. Remember the two is over here, okay? And then, and then with respect to x, we ignore that, and that gives us minus. Give us minus lambda, lambda, lambda x prime, and that has to be equal to zero. And the same way with the y's, we'll do exactly the same thing. So partial, there's a two, partial L, partial Y, equal to, with respect to Y, we get uh, B prime X prime plus C prime Y prime. Again, the two is over there, all the twos from the derivatives, minus lambda Y prime equal to zero. All right. Now, as we have researched, as the Lagrange method states, that these two equations contain within themselves the extreme values. And as we have already stated, x prime equal to 1 and y prime equal to 0 is one of our extreme values that we set this thing on. So then, so if we set x prime equal to 1, y prime equal to 0, in the second equation right here, x is 1, y is 0, so what does that give you? That will give you that b prime equal to 0. And that's exactly what we're driving for. Because we're trying to knock out the b so that the new system doesn't have a b in it. b is 0. Okay, so however, at this point, we still haven't figured, well, this is all very good, but we still haven't figured out exactly how to calculate. Where does, what is a prime exactly? We don't know what, it, we just know that it exists, but we don't know what it is. To know what it is, what we're going to do is, uh, is this thing. Now, this is the L prime equation for the Lagrange function, and we'll write down the original L. The original L function, which is based on this, Lxy, uh, of, of, and consider this thing as the constraint, is equal to, copy this all down, x squared, 2b, xy, plus c, y squared, and then uh, minus lambda times x squared plus y squared. Now this is the, the old Lagrange's equation. And notice that this thing, when you turn the axis, will turn into this thing, because this part turns into here, okay, as we have set it up, and the unit circle just turned into the unit circle. Nothing's changed there, so it's exactly the same. So this whole equation, after turning, will get to this point. And the, and the difference being is the only thing is b prime, as we have just shown, is equal to 0. So what that means is now we're going to use the discriminant fact. The discriminant fact says that the discriminant of this and this are the same, even though their values are very different. So what is the discriminant of this thing? The discriminant of this, as defined as ac minus b squared, in this case, the a becomes a minus lambda, because the a is the value in front of x squared. So we have a minus lambda times uh, c minus lambda. Okay, there's the c and minus lambda in front of y c minus lambda, and then uh, minus b squared, there's only one xy term there, it's going to be equal to the same way on a prime, so a prime minus lambda, c prime minus lambda, and here's the trick, b prime is zero. So this value is exactly the same as this value. Now in this particular uh, polynomial here, you have lambda that is uh, identical, there's also lambda here, so this equation, as you can see, this polynomial of effectively has two roots, and the two roots are exactly a prime and c prime. So what we need to do, given an equation like this, is simply do this, solve this problem, quadratic equation, and when you do that, you will be able to come up with two roots, as is shown here, and, and those two roots will be a prime and c prime. Which one is C and which one is C is not that interesting. It depends on how you turn the axis. And anyway, as a, for a quick example of this, let's look, look at a very simple example. See, this the proof is very complex, but once we get through the, the proof, the, the solution here is actually very simple. So now we just uh, do quadratic equations. For example, let's say you have, have an e ellipse that looks like this. A complicated looking ellipse, 73x squared um, plus 
x y and then plus 52 y and all that equal to say 100 squared okay this is an ellipse and it's tilted and we don't know what it really looked like that much because it's it's tilted now we want to um to find out to change it into a format where we get rid of this thing by changing the coordinate turning the coordinates so we follow this particular equation and we get a minus lambda which is 73 minus lambda times c minus lambda is 52 minus lambda and then minus b squared b squared is 72 equal to zero and that is a very simple quadratic equation now by the time you do some base do some calculator work that you will get something like this uh, minus 125 lambda plus um, plus 2500 equals zero which will give you the solution of lambda equals to 25 and lambda equals to 100 which means this equation this particular uh, ellipse simplifies into um, 25 and 100 doesn't matter which one's which you just do 25x squared plus 100y squared. The middle term has disappeared and equal to 100 at the end. And of course, that can be further simplified to be a very simple ellipse. And that is, and you notice that we did a transformation without knowing exactly what the angle is. So that skipped the step, and that's where Lagrange's method is slightly more convenient.